Hi, this is Nathaniel Stacy one Thanks for coming back to my channel. In a recent Cool Evolution Facts video, I discussed the evolution of insect metamorphosis as is seen in butterflies, flies, etc. In this video, I wanted to talk a little more in depth about something that I think is much more interesting, and that's the evolution of insect flight. In particular, I wanted to talk about the evolution of lepidopterid flight, or flight in moths and butterflies. Back in my creationist days, I remember that flight was generally taught to be something that couldn't have evolved. Modern proponents of intelligent design would call butterfly wings, for instance, objects of irreducible complexity. A form of wing that was too primitive to produce flight, they would argue, would be of no use to a butterfly, and a complex system that could produce flight couldn't have evolved all in one stroke. Therefore, God did it. So here's the question. How did Lepidoptera, or moths and butterflies, evolve the ability to fly? First, it's important to acknowledge that, due to a sparse early fossil record, we can't say for certain precisely how moth flight evolved. Butterflies evolved directly from moths, by the way, so moths were the first to fly. But that doesn't mean that we can't make intelligent, informed guesses on what factors likely led to the evolution of Lepidopterid flight. And hopefully, as more fossils are found in the future, and with improved abilities to interpret DNA from an evolutionary standpoint, we'll have a much clearer picture of this aspect of evolution within coming decades. In order to understand how winged flight likely evolved, we can look at some of the other modern functions of lepidopterid wings, most or all of which likely predate flight. For example, most moths and many butterflies' wings are patterned to provide camouflage, and this may well be the earliest use of appendages that would eventually evolve into wings. These appendages may have started simply as spikes, which would later develop thin membranes, or may have started as membranous protrusions. Whatever the case, it's probable that the first benefit derived from these appendages was camouflage, appearing perhaps to be leaf-like, or resembling the bark of a tree. Moreover, the simple change in body shape, from that of essentially a worm, to that of a worm with spikes or protruding membranes, could put predators that had evolved to prey on worm-like bodies at a disadvantage. A simple change in the silhouette of the moth's ancestor could give that organism a better chance of survival. Another defensive attribute of these membranes could have been to make it harder for attempted predators to identify the location of the ancestral moth's fleshy, worm-like body. Therefore, the predator grabs the membrane rather than the body. The membrane breaks, allowing the near victim to fall to safety. But defense is not the only purpose these early membranous appendages may have had. Just as many modern moths and butterflies, those early ancestors may have used the membranes for temperature control. Exposed to the sun, it warms the body. Exposed to a breeze, it cools, etc. Now, none of these uses requires the appendages to possess any sort of motility. But at the same time, some degree of motility would make the appendages more effective for all these strategies, and the better control the moth's ancestor had over these appendages' movement, the more effective it would be. So over time, natural selection chooses an organism with highly motile, highly controllable, membranous, somewhat wing-like appendages, but they aren't actually wings yet. The next couple of steps will take care of that. There is yet another purpose for which modern moths frequently use their wings, which would require the previously evolved motile, controllable, membranous appendages that have already evolved, and would hone them into aerodynamic proto-wings, and that is the dispersal of pheromones. In modern Lepidoptera, females of each species attract males by releasing chemical sexual attractants called pheromones, and they disperse the scent of these pheromones by rapidly fluttering their wings. Early flightless ancestors of moths probably did precisely the same thing, and females that were better able to disperse their scents more quickly, and over a greater area, would be far more reproductively successful, having access to the greatest number of males. What attributes, then, would make the female's appendages most adept at dispersing the pheromones? Strength and an aerodynamic form. These attributes, inherited by male offspring of females with this trait, would bestow yet another benefit. 
males could use their appendages to aid in locomotion, likely buzzing across the ground or perhaps along a tree branch at their sexual maturity to find mates. At this stage, these early proto-wings would only require minor refinements before early moths were able to take to their very first true flights. All this was happening back when the age of dinosaurs was just beginning, so moths and later butterflies have had plenty of time for evolution to refine, hone and diversify their wings into specimens that are so spectacular, so beautiful, and so effective, it's amazing to think that it all began with some worms growing simple appendages to confuse a predator or two. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you'll like it, comment, and share, and come back and watch other videos on this channel. Until next time.